All right, guys, so it's the start of another video. And to uh, start off this video, I'm gonna show I got uh, the ball joints out, the inner and outer tie rods. Um, I wanna run OEM ball joints and OEM tie rod end links, or tie rod ends, um, because the drift knuckles kit comes with inner tie rods. So I'm gonna use the uh, inner tie rods they include. I have to order uh, Moog OE uh, tie rod ends and Moog OE ball joints because Subaru doesn't make them anymore, uh, nor does Toyota. Um, and yeah, I got the old ones out with a hammer and a socket, just put it on there, hammered it out. Worked actually pretty well. Um, and then I'm gonna get a tool to put the new ones in. And as you can see on this side, I got the inner and outer tie rods off as well. Um, so now I'm all good to, to get the new stuff and put it all in. Um, still debating on whether I wanna paint the brakes just black. I don't know if I will because the paint that I have probably won't stick very well, so I'll probably just leave it. Like I said, I'm not really worried about this thing cosmetically, but now I gotta get it from sitting on the jack and get it back on the dollies. And then now it's just a matter of ordering parts and waiting for them. So it's fun in the Waterboy Clubhouse, or whatever we decide to name this place. Gotta pull the radiator off of the Sex B because it's leaking. So I gotta order a radiator. You can leave that off if you want. It's just gonna sit in here until I get the radiator, anyways. So we got this thing. Nah. Got Matt's WR Sex. Got the Subaru Lega Sexy. The Sex B and the FR Sex. A lot of sex going on in here. But we got Matt dusting his hands off. He's doing all my work for me. I just pay him in Skittles. I like Skittles. So, yeah, we found the leak. It's uh, peeing out of there. So I'll just order some $40 eBay thing and slap her in there, send it home. It'll be a fun time. So I pull this thing in here over here um, until I get a radiator because I don't want her to drive it and have it leak and overheat. Um, but we're kind of seeing how much room we'll have when Matt gets a sick BMW to drift around. Um, kind of seeing how much room we'll have if we have both cars to the wall and it turns out that the XB is about the same width as a E46 and that's probably the biggest car that he's looking at getting so I mean I can walk through here comfortably and with the mirrors folded it's not bad and I mean my car isn't completely to the wall neither is the XB because this one I drove in um, but shit yeah we'll have tons of room push one car more forward push one car further back put them at an angle if we gotta work on stuff and we gotta make some dollies. The ones that I have are super junk, total waste of money. Um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be good times. Have another toolbox back there, that'll be sweet. All right guys, so exciting news. Um, I have the other shop and Matt is actually uh, moving in with me. So I was thinking, you know, I should see if they have any other ones out here. So I called my uh, storage manager and he has this one. Um, and this one actually has outlets in it already. Um, he said, you know, these normally aren't here, but you know, the guy tapped into it. And he said, you know, it's perfectly fine if we run an air compressor, battery charger, shit like that. So we have complete permission to use the electric. Um, I have complete permission to drill into the walls to hang up stuff. Like obviously the person who was here before put this up. They put some shelves up up here. So today I just plan on getting, you know, all of the, the essential shit in here. Um, I can't move the FRS because it's on dollies, obviously, but you know, that's, that's another story. I gotta wait for my knuckles to get here. Um, but then I wanna get these shelves down. This, it looks like a, I don't know, two by eight or two by 10 or whatever the hell, get that down. Um, and then just get everything in here. Matt's bringing his toolbox today. I'm trying to get mine up on this lip. I just rolled it over because it's on the complete opposite side of the, the storage structure. So I just gotta get this thing up here. And uh, if I can, I'm just gonna wait for Matt. He'll, he'll help me out. I was just in a hurry, I'm super excited. Um, but yeah, we got this one and then we got the other one. Not sure if we're gonna keep both forever. Um, my plan was to use this one for you know working on shit and then have the other one just for storage. That would work perfectly fine by me. Um, and then we'll just split the cost of both of them. It'll be a good time, but yeah, I just gotta get this thing in here. I'm gonna start, you know, just bringing stuff over, just walking it over. And then, yeah, happy times. Gotta get my ladder and change out that light bulb, that old crusty ass light bulb. Um, 
and get my my nice one in here but loving it freaking loving it all right guys so far i've got that weird wooden thing off the wall here um i've got all those brackets off of this piece of wood but i can't get this piece of wood down um, because these are countersunk so bad i can't get a socket on there um, so I might try and like pry it up and then get a socket on there later, but for right now I think I'm gonna leave it. I got all the wood over here that was on the wall and the two shelves. These shelf brackets look like they're made of like eBay garbage material. I mean, those are getting thrown away. Um, but I'm thinking, I'll see what Matt says when he gets here, but I'm thinking we could put our two boxes here because it's a little bit more narrow than the other one is by a few inches. So I'm thinking maybe do that and have our cars here and have them kind of like tilted a bit um, so that we have more room than just having them in here straight. So maybe I'll pull the ladies XB in and then kind of use that as reference. Although this thing is freaking tiny, so it's not gonna be a very good example of what it could be like, but you know, it's, it's something. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna wait for him to get here. Uh, I might start reorganizing my toolbox because it's kind of messy. Um, and then, yeah, wait for him to get here, get his toolbox in here, and we'll just start kind of looking through stuff. Uh, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this stuff. I don't think I'm gonna reuse it just because it's, I don't know. Well, these pieces I might reuse, but these ones I probably won't because they're kind of mismatched. Um, and the plywood I might use for like shelves um, or shelves over here for like uh, PB blaster, you know, chemicals, oil, stuff like that. It'd be a good idea. Um, and then we'll maybe put, excuse me, put a long bench in between the two boxes. Um, and we'll put our jacks and stuff under there. I don't know. We'll see what he says when he gets here. See what ideas he comes up with. So we got both boxes in. Got the XB in here, kind of crooked. Matt's working on his WRX. Doing some brakes. Getting some stupid ass stuff off after running into my pad on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing that. And uh, we found out that the neighbor is moving out soon. And this wall is basically a big divider. It's not actually attached to anything except for up there. So we're thinking maybe I could uh, switch mine to this, that one, um, and then just pop the plywood out and be able to walk back and forth. That'd be cool. But yeah. All right, so it's a fresh new day, and uh, Matt got three of the four brakes done on his car. So he's got the new calipers, he's got new lines, um, uh, braided stainless lines going to the calipers. He's got new pads, um, new rotors. Uh, step over this thing quick. Same thing over here. Got new calipers, new pads, new rotors, new lines, and in the back, um same thing he's just got to do one last side he's got to do this side today and then we've got to bleed the brakes and uh the new radiator is here for gracie's car for the xb so i'm going to get that in today um hopefully i have enough coolant i might have to go buy another jug but i just used an old empty cooling container and filled it up with the coolant from our car and of course there was some transmission fluid that came out um, from the transmission cooler lines, but I should be good. I'll obviously check everything, and if I need to get more trans fluid, I will. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea to do a trans flush on this thing um, either way. But yeah, we uh, will take it from there. I also got a little TV set up in here uh, with the iPhone connector, so the ladies can watch TV when me and the boys are working on our junk boxes. Well. Mine's a junk box. This is not a junk box. Don't take that the wrong way, Matt. It's not a junk box But yeah, we'll see how it goes today So here we have the new radiator uh, the old ones in a box full of garbage that I have to take care of later, but um, Got the new one. So I got to put the fan shroud on. It's kind of interesting I've never seen a fan shroud that has a built-in overflow into it. That's kind of cool um, and Then of course I've got all the mounts the upper hose. I got the other hoses back on here um, and I just want to say, Matt has one of the tools, cools, or coolest tools. Whoa, man. Um, so the bolt that is, that wasn't here has been stuck in here since like 
we got the car. So Matt's got this mini ductor. Basically, it's a little coil that heats up anything in the middle of it. And it is the coolest thing in the world. I mean, I had to get that bolt completely orange to get it out. And this thing did that. It is just incredible. And then if you ever struggle with bad bolts, get one of those. It's like $500 I think he spent on it. Completely worth it. Best tool ever. Just do it, just get it. So everything is transferred onto the new radiator. Now I just gotta get that in there and then get it connected to all the lines. Hopefully all the clamps are good enough. Um, but yeah, that took, or that was super fast. It took me like, I don't know, three minutes to get everything on. Um, everything is pretty quality looking on this radiator. It's just a TYC replacement I got off of Amazon. There was some cheaper ones on eBay. I think they were like 40-ish dollars. Uh, but this one was Amazon Prime. It would get here super quick. And uh, I've actually used TYC before and I've had very good luck with their products. I've never had any issues at all. So definitely recommend TYC if you're, you know, looking for a budget radiator to put in a, a daily or something like that. Are you excited to drive your car again? She's excited. All right, so everything's back on. I had to get some uh, hose clamps for the trans cooler lines at the bottom because the original ones were kind of janky. Um, and I also put a few dents in the fins right there just because uh, this bolt that sticks out of the condenser, but as long as it didn't hit the cooling pass or passageways, it should be fine. Um, so now I just gotta let this thing warm up and then burp it and all that. Oh, I just have to wait because <laughs> Matt's finishing up his brakes. Just lubing up the last one. Sam saying hi. Hello, Sam. How would you rate this experience of doing brakes? Here? Yeah. A lot better than at home. Uh, I guess that's true. Pain in the ass with the fucking clips. Yeah, the, dude. Everything can go smoothly, and then you get one of these clips, and it'll just ruin your entire life. It's just you, you do one of these clips, you need to put it, be put on a suicide watch. Yeah. Yo guys, uh, so new shop video here, or whatever I'm gonna call these videos. Uh, new camera too, I'm using a GoPro. Uh, but as you can see, I got some eBay spacers and the uh, drift knuckle kit finally came. So I'm gonna be heading out to the shop to get this back on the FRS. What's up, buddy? What's up, my meow? -a? He don't care. So yeah, I'm gonna be heading out to the shop, get this all installed, I'm excited. Finally have the FRS rolling again. Grab my shoes, grab my keys, grab some beer, and I'm out. All right guys, so we're out here. Here's the FRS as it sits. Missing everything, gotta put everything on. Um, got a bunch of goodies in here. Let's take a look, we got a bunch of tools. We got a bunch of beer, a bunch of twisted tea. Got the... Uh, Drift knuckles kit, got some water, some Powerade. Of course, you know, I keep the important stuff in the in the cooler, you know, the beer. Gotta throw this water in there too, it's cold. But yeah, I think I'm gonna start out putting the tie rods in because it's gonna be harder to do that with everything else in the way. So I'm gonna get those in and then uh, probably put the hubs in the knuckles and then put the knuckles on and then torque everything. But hoping to record everything I do. So let's get started. Oh, that would have been cool if it landed. Nah. So I'm just taking a look at everything here. Um, these are the inner tie rods that came with the Drift Knuckles kit. And these are Megan um, extended inner tie rods. So you can see the Megan tie rods have the spacer built into them. And then they have longer threads. And these ones, they give you a spacer and the threads aren't as long. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna run the ones they sent me or if I'll just use the ones I had on the car. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I might end up just reusing the Megan tie rods because I, I just feel better having more threads, you know? But I guess we'll see. Um, I gotta think about it a little bit here while I get everything unpacked. But yeah, then here's the knuckles. The uh, pink got all fucked up in shipping, but whatever, I don't really care. It's gonna get messed up anyways. So yeah, time to get to work. All right, so I got the tie rods on. I got the wheel turned all the way to the opposite side, so you can't really see it on this side. So let's take a look over here. 
Um, got tie rods on, put the new ones in. Um, I totally disregarded the fact that the knuckles are shortened, so you'd need an actual longer tie rod. And these ones are super stiff because they're obviously brand new. Um, so I got these on. Now I'm going to get the knuckles on, get the hub in there, uh, get that all tightened up. And then basically you just have to put on the brakes and be good. So here we go, we have the knuckle in. I've got the uh, ball joint snugged up a little bit and tired snugged up. I still have to fully tighten them. Um, but we got this side in. Now I just gotta do the other side. Um, it's just kinda neat to look at this and see all these new parts, new ball joints, new tie rods, new inner tie rods. And you know, the knuckle looks new because it's painted. It looks nice. All right guys, we're one twisted T down and we have the tie rods in, knuckles in, we got the hubs in. Um, so now it's just, you know, the brakes and then mounting them to the um, struts. I just have to do an alignment, but I think I'm gonna get it, you know, close, like eyeballed, and then drive it over to the other shop and do the alignment over there. Just because the sun isn't beating in like it is over here, so it'll be cooler. And um, all my tools are over there, like in here I just have shit that I'm storing. So, yeah, and I got these cozies on here, or cosi, or however the fuck you want to say it. Matt gave those to me for something, I forget what deal we worked out, but yeah, I got those, they're 17 by 7, same as the stock wheels, I believe, so those will be good spares. I might have to run them in the front if these spacers don't give me enough clearance, um, because I know with uh, just the Megan inner tie rods, I was rubbing tie rod with my barrel, I can see over here, the barrel's all fucked up, um, so I guess we'll see. All right guys, so I have the steering wheel cranked and I have this side done. This is awesome. I've got so much angle now compared to what I used to have. I had a, even with one inch spacer, I was rubbing the tie rod still. So I ended up adding another half inch spacer because there's enough lugs or there's enough lug stud to do it safely. And I don't rub the tie rod now, but I do rub on the car. Um, so I don't know, I guess I'll just have to deal with it. Otherwise, I might have to run the co-size or something. I'll figure it out. I'll test fit both wheels and see how it works, but hopefully I can get this all done quick and maybe even head out to the track tonight. All right, guys, so here's how it looks with the angle kit on and a fuck ton of spacers because it rubs on everything. It looks badass, not gonna lie. I really like that. So if we crank the wheel, it's gonna be more difficult now because it's on the ground. Yeah, forget that. I'll just show it later. Matt's gonna do a solid and crank it for me with his man hands. Yeah, so there's that side. There we go. That's gonna be tight. Oh, yeah. Decent. Lot, but that's close yeah, I gotta adjust the caster. I gotta figure out how to get that adjusted so that my track is uh, flat at full lock, but oh well. It's awesome for now. Now I gotta try and align this thing. Our coworker might have a buddy who has a shop across the street who might be able to help me align it. Because well, he's for sure got a buddy with a shop. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't really want to align it on the ground because it's gonna be a bitch to jack it up, drop it down, jack it up, drop it down. So if his buddy has a lift and he can help us do it faster, it'd be great. All right guys, so everything's in. I've got the boot zip tied on the steering rack. I did a little quick uh, ghetto garage alignment um, and then tightened up the coilover collars. So we should be good. Might be hitting the track tonight, might not be. Just depends on, on the ladies. Depends what the ladies want. No lot nothing to do with the track. Yeah, we don't want to make, make the ladies mad, so. But, yeah, so I'm interested to see how it feels on the track, though. So, I guess we'll see. So, I just got to say, the, the track width on this thing is crazy now. And I actually did a couple donuts in the, the gravel, just some, like, slow-turning donuts. Um, and I don't think I'm rubbing anywhere except for the fenders, which I don't care about the fenders. They can roll and pull themselves for all I care. So yeah, it's crazy. Looks good. So 
So also, got a wide front FRS and a wide body Hellcat chilling out here, dude. A wide front FRS. A wide front FRS, he says. <laughs> yeah, check this thing out. Badass. Then we got the couple of Subarus over here. These are the real attraction, dude. A legacy oh, wagon, bro. Right there. Dude, Japanese muscle. With the 18 inch 1552s, shit. Ain't got nothing on a Hellcat. 